Hello and welcome to another video for Linmob.net. Today I'm taking another look at SafeAssure's, the nice and major Linux phone OS that sadly has some proprietary UI components. So, why do I do that? Well, there's been a new release of SafeAssure's, it's called Coli, or Coli, I don't know how to exactly pronounce it, and it's version 4.0.1. And this specific release I'm trying here is the latest one as far as I know, and that's 4.0.1.48. So, as you notice, it looks a little bit different, so they uh, changed these ambiences that then shine through with the apps. This is something that fits the brand of Yola, the company behind this OS, very, very well, and, you know, Sailfish. Yola, Yola is some kind of little boat uh, and a lighthouse that's just fitting. So let's have a look at this. And let's start with the browser. The browser has been updated to Gecko 60. Now this is huge news because Gecko 60 uh, or Firefox 60 as you may know it, uh, was one of the versions of Firefox that already had some Rust support. And yeah, if you use this HTML5 test, which is some outdated thing that I discovered back in the day, but I'm still using it to compare browser features, it's uh, doing fairly well. Also, this is the default Safish browser, and remember, that thing didn't work before on the PinePhone. So before we had to use WebCat, which is why this is pre-installed, and WebCat is based on Qt WebKit, uh, because the Qt version that SailfishOS sure uses is uh, too old to have a Qt web engine or something. And now if we go to the same site here, and I'm doing this in a very clunky way, I'm sorry, uh, then we'll notice that the result is definitely a lot worse. So we've got a way better browser, it's faster more featureful and so on. And they are planning to update this to Firefox 78 uh, soon, or Gecko 78, uh, which is the current ESR release. Now it won't be for long, but current uh, main release of Firefox is 86. I think they're releasing every four weeks and uh, 88 is going to be the next uh, enhanced stability release. But now that uh, Yola and Safish have finally caught up, I think they are going to have an easier time following these enhanced stability release, enhanced service release, what was it again? Doesn't matter, uh, these are ESR branches closer and closer, and thus keeping the browser up to date, the user safe, and the platform more interesting for those that don't have the Android support, the commercial Safish X service has. And yeah, it's really important that this works on the PinePhone now. So this is uh, thanks to Fry from Yola who made the uh, Safish browser work in uh, on Mesa platforms like the PinePhone. So it will also work on other mainline Linux devices if you manage to port Safish onto them. So yeah, now the, uh, some of these apps have been installed by me after the fact because I've been trying to use this a bit. But if we start an app that I haven't started yet, for example, the gallery app, apps now ask for some permissions. So Safeisher has now features a fire jail based me mechanism that tells you which kind of stuff an app can access. And this is a definitely a nice thing, nice thing. Now, many apps are actually open source. Um, if you use this storm install that comes pre-installed with this because this is an unofficial build. Um, you, you'll find find a lot of them. Uh, you can also see these apps if you don't use Selfish yet on openrepos.net. So there you can browse for, for apps that you might need. So there's, for example, a matrix client, which certainly doesn't support end-to-end -end encryption yet, a signal client and a telegram client. I don't know how well those work, they may be work in progress, but it's a thing. Now, the browser is fixed, 
and works now. Unfortunately, the email app uh, isn't yet. So if you're looking at the email app and just try to open this email here, we'll see that there's just the blank void that we had with the standard browser before. And that's a little bit sad, but yeah, I think that's eventually going to be fixed too. And yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm really hopeful there. Going back to apps briefly, other sources of apps are the Yola store, which requires you to sign up with Yola and then also in theory, Flatpak. Now, the Safish Flatpak stuff doesn't work yet on this new release, as far as I know. At least there's an issue on the GitHub that uh, would suggest that. And also, I think it has never worked on the Pine phone. But if that were to come uh, and we could have all the Flathub and uh, other Flatpak sources, that would be quite impressive. I've seen, for example, builds of Anglefish, the Plasma mobile web browser running on Safish OS, and that would be a quite nice addition, right? More browsers are always nice. But then there's one more thing I wanted to talk about, um, and that is Contract. Now, Contract is somewhat unique because it's an exposure notification framework app that uses this Apple Google exposure notification pr framework against COVID-19. And it's the only app for the Pine phone uh, that does this that I know of. So this is really unique and yeah, it seems to work. Now, it isn't really uh, calibrated. So you have to calibrate the attenuation and there are no values for the Pine phone available, which is why I just used the default, which may be a bad idea. Also, I'm not sure whether this really works while the phone is in deep sleep, but still it's something. I think, if you are looking for that stuff. And if you don't look for it, you don't have to install it. Also, there are some Maps app. Uh, I didn't get GPS reception yet, but uh, I wasn't outside with the phone much, and I don't use my balcony currently because there are some birds that are uh, trying to have little uh, birdies, and I don't want to disturb them. Uh, now, last but not least, now, phone calls are an important topic, right? Uh, and, well, they work, of course. Now, I won't answer this, and I'll hang up here. Uh, and I, I tried a brief phone call, and it was fine, but the other person sounded weird. So, the earpiece seems to be miscalibrated, or, or, or the earpiece of my Pine phone is just dying. Mobile data works too. You can enable it here. And I've been using it for a little bit. Um, so let's go to the settings app. Where you can actually see how much data you've been using. There it is. And that aside, um, now how do you get this sailfish built? Well, it's not available as an image and you need to upgrade it manually. And while I will not do this entire process here, uh, I will show the first step before I stop. And that is, you have to set a password here. So you can just hit generate and then it will generate a password. And that is needed to become root and then do the other commands to upgrade this. And you will need to confirm with your security code to do so. But that is the first step, and then it will work. So I think Safish OS is really shaping up nicely now. I don't know whether the GPS works. The camera definitely doesn't work. But aside from the email app also not working yet, it's the, the fact alone that the browser is working now and generally how smooth this is um, makes it worth a look, I think. So try it out and have fun. And see you soon. Have a great time. Bye-bye.